my name is Tani and thank you for clicking on this video. If you have, I'm going to assume that you perhaps have recently been diagnosed with early Lyme disease or know someone who has and want to get some more information. And so I would love to share with you what I know about it from my own experience. I was diagnosed with it a year ago, around this time, actually. <laughs> And so I feel like I've learned a lot and in going through it myself, I just want to hopefully be able to share some things that might make your journey a little easier, I hope. So I am not a doctor. <laughs> I just have had my own experience and some things that I experienced really helpful for what I was experiencing. So I would love to share that with you. And to give you a, a little summary, I guess, on what had happened, long story short, is that I woke up one day with a tick in my ear, and um, I didn't do anything about it, <laughs> but I slowly started getting really sick, and about a day or two went by, and I went to urgent care, and I was given doxycycline. And it was, it was just like a single dose type of thing. I don't remember if it was one or two pills. But from my experience, if I could go back in time, I would have asked for three weeks worth. And why that is, is because what ended up happening is I actually had a type of tick bacteria that is actually deadly. Um, if you don't take care of it. And I don't know how to say it exactly, but I wrote it down and it's... Auricula chaffinesis, I think. Chaffinesis. And yeah, so I <laughs> I wasn't given enough of the back of the antibiotic to eradicate the bacteria. So what ended up happening is I took this single dose and then after a bit I just kept getting sicker and sicker, but because I had taken an antibiotic, I didn't think that it was related to the tick bite. And neither did doctors, because I went to doctors numerous times in urgent care. Two or three times. <laughs> like the ER. <laughs> Not urgent care, but the ER. And no one knew what was going on with me, which was really scary. If you've ever experienced that. Just like a mystery illness. So I would recommend the three weeks worth because ironically, when I was Googling things when I wasn't feeling well after the tick bite. I was trying to figure out what to do. Like, should I go to, you know, urgent care? Should I take an antibiotic? Like, what should I do? And I had read that oftentimes people are just given the single dose of doxycycline. But really, like, the best thing to do from what I read is three weeks. So what's funny is that when the nurse or whoever it was I saw at urgent care just gave me the single dose, I almost wanted to say something like, can I just take the three weeks worth? But, you know, I mean, if I had done that, um, I think it would have helped me a lot. I don't think I would have ended up going through what I did, but in going through what I did, I learned a lot. And again, hopefully what I did learn can help you as well. So I don't know if you've experienced this, but when you uh, get sick with something and you don't understand it, I think it can inspire one to do or want to do a lot of research to understand what's going on. And especially in my scenario, I didn't understand what's happening. So I was doing so much Googling, <laughs> trying to figure out what's going on. And with mine specifically too, I started not only, I literally did feel like I was dying because again, I think it was, <laughs> but I was just getting so sick and I was so tired and I just felt like my body was failing me. And then I ended up getting these big red rashes on my body. It almost kind of looked like sunburn, but it wasn't. And come to find out that was like one of the symptoms of the bacteria that I had. And I'm very fortunate to have gone to, it was a nurse practitioner, but she was so helpful in testing me for so many different things to try to figure out what was going on with me. And ultimately, like a month 
around a month after um, I first went to urgent care to get the doxycycline, the single dose. About a month later is when I had a ton of testing done ultimately to find out that I was diagnosed with early Lyme disease and the bacteria that I mentioned, it's E. chefnesis. <laughs> I'll like put things in the description, so. So please, if you're feeling really sick after getting a tick bite, please, you know, see a doctor, get an antibiotic, what have you. However, I don't want to just say do an antibiotic. Personally, I'm someone I'm not, I like, honestly, I just like doing more natural things. I don't like having to take medicine if I don't have to. However, in this instance, I felt like I did have to. And I'm thankful for it, obviously. But there are also things you can do to help with your ailments and things, your symptoms that aren't just antibiotic wise. And that's what I want to share with you. Bird distracted me. So I, my, uh, I'll say doctor, but she's my nurse practitioner. It doesn't really matter, but, um, in this scenario <laughs> for the story, um, she basically put me on the antibiotic two days before finding out what the test results ultimately were. And so I had a lot of symptoms going on and a couple that started happening that were really scary to me were that my eyesight started getting blurry and my left eye started drooping. And, and so I had started the antibiotic and these things were happening. And then uh, luckily there, um, I think my, oh, this is what happened. I went to an acupuncturist that I often go to. And what's so interesting and synchronistic is that I went to her because I was feeling really sick. And there was a woman in front of me who came out of the room to pay and everything. And she had Lyme disease. And she had a more chronic form and she was in so much pain and i heard the acupuncturist talking to her about this tincture that this herb farm like a local kind of herb farm offered and so that was in my mind and so when i found out finally that i had lyme disease and like the bacteria i asked the acupuncturist what it was and so i went to this herb farm and the woman who owned it, I talked to her and she was so helpful and gave me all this advice. And um, I ended up getting a tincture. And so one thing I would so recommend to you, if you want to try it, is tincture. Because it was so helpful to me. I swear, like, as I said, I was taking the antibiotics for two days. My eyesight was getting blurry. My left eye was drooping. I started taking this tincture. Um about so I did the antibiotic for two days I say I started it on um the antibiotic on a Thursday I like found out that I had Lyme disease is on a Friday and the following day on a Saturday I went to get this tincture and like other things she recommended to me and just other advice she had to share so I this is the tincture that I was taking I'm not taking it anymore but it has teasel root, sweet annie, and Japanese knotweed in it. And I forget what they all do. You can Google this stuff and see what it does. Um, I will link this stuff specifically in the description if you want to try it. They, I'm sure you can find this elsewhere, but this specifically was extremely helpful to me. I was told that it worked synergistically with the antibiotic, which is awesome. And I swear, like, within two days, my eye was back to normal, the drooping, it was gone. So I really, really credit, I, like, I'm thankful for the antibiotic, and I think that helped me immensely. But this stuff, um, I swear it was this <laughs> that, like, really, really helped me. And there was something else I was taking. It was, like, this tea thing. Absolutely disgusting <laughs> when I was doing it. Another thing I would recommend that you do is read the medical medium book there's various ones but the main one and i can link that as well 
but it talks about Lyme disease and it has different foods that are recommended to eat and to not eat. I do know it was recommended to me not to have sweets. Um, I forget if bread was a thing not to have too. I don't think I, I was very strict. Like I was very serious about getting back to like normal and getting back to healthy. So I like fouled up pretty well. Like no sweets, blueberries are really good. So I was eating a ton of those like every day and there are just like various foods to look at. So I would recommend doing that, like following a, a pretty strict diet. Cause here's the thing, like to me, it was worth doing all these things, to try to get better. And now like I'm over all these like really difficult things I was going through. A big thing I want to say is that I have immense empathy if your symptoms are similar to mine, which it's hard to say what was what because I had this other bacteria as well, but you know, in addition to being diagnosed with Lyme disease, but I was experiencing the worst anxiety. Like I didn't know anxiety existed on this level. I was feeling that it was insane. It was terrifying. It was like literal terror, like just existing, um, depression, like you name it, it was terrible. And so immense empathy to you if you're feeling that, if you're feeling really scared, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling really depressed or like suicidal, anything like that. I forget the percentage, but I remember looking it up and the percentage of people that have Lyme disease, like the percentage of depression and like suicide goes up an insane amount. Um, I don't know how, why that happens, but just know you are not alone and that it will pass. Just believe that it will pass. It happened for me. <laughs> I didn't think that it was going to happen, but it did. Um, I would not say I'm a religious person. I was raised Catholic and then I would, if I had to say any label, I would just say that I'm spiritual and I believe there's a God or some form, you know, of higher power. But I will say that to like praying, um, really helped me a lot too. I just like, I was so, so desperate for help that I really turned to prayer and my mom had this like holy oil, it's like St. Anne's oil and also holy water from Lourdes, France. So I was like using that too. And yeah, I was praying a lot. So I would recommend if it's, if it resonates to do something like that, like just find something that will give you hope or a sense of safety or support. Um, I felt really thankful to have loved ones who were there for me um, and who, even if they didn't understand what was like happening for me, that they wanted to help or be, you know. So I would reach out if you have any type of support, whether it's like family, friends, or some type of online community, like anything. Like so I think support is really, really good because it can be very isolating, um, especially if you're feeling so like scared and depressed or what have you. And again, I don't know if that was specifically related to Lyme, like early Lyme disease or the bacteria that I had, or maybe both, but I'd recommend those things. Another thing to think about as well that's really interesting is the medical medium book that I mentioned talks about Lyme disease in general and is kind of saying, you have to read it, you don't have to read it, but I mean like... You'd have to read it to see exactly what he said, but it basically talks about how it kind of like, like a lot of people that are diagnosed with Lyme disease, it's not Lyme disease that they have, but Epstein-Barr virus, it's known as EBV. So if you're someone that has um, early Lyme disease or just Lyme disease in general, I would also look into that because you might have that and that can have similar symptoms as well. And that's someone that's something that most people have. It's something crazy, like nine out of ten people have Epstein Barr virus. So it's like very common. It sounds scary when you, you when you look it up, it sounds scary. But it's what it is is like 
if you've ever had mono, um, you have it. It's like, um, it lies dormant in your system. And then if you experience something stressful or traumatic, it can re-trigger it. Um, and that is known as activated Epstein-Barr virus. So, so say, for instance, maybe you got bit by a tick and you don't have Lyme disease, but, <clears throat> excuse me, the stress for that experience could activate Epstein-Barr in your body. So, and a lot of the foods that are recommended for Lyme disease in the medical medium book are the kind of the same for Epstein-Barr. And there are things you can take for Epstein-Barr as well, like um, tinctures and things. Cat's Claw is supposed to be a really good one. Um, L-lacine is a supplement that's supposed to help as well. Again, I would just recommend the book or just like going online, you'll find articles. You don't have, like, have to read the book. I took it up from the library. I didn't buy the book. And um, I want to say another one of his books talks about Lyme as well. I don't know if it's a liver rescue. But I would just recommend the main book. It's pretty interesting. Even if you just want to like read about the Lyme and Epstein-Barr. Um, and with Epstein-Barr, like you can get that from like in in your the womb <laughs> like from your mother um from sharing drinks like kissing like there's just all these ways you can get it and i think it sounds scarier than it is but it can make you really tired um like the achy joints a lot of the similar things that are associated with lime so i would check that out too and try to think if there's anything else that i would recommend um, I think I touched on everything. So to summarize, I would say, again, the antibiotic. From my own experience, to just do the three weeks, if you've been bitten and feel sick. Also, I didn't know that's where you're supposed to keep the tick that bit you, so it can be tested. I didn't know that um, at the time. Find a sense of community and support, knowing you're not alone. And I would take things day by day, moment by moment. Um, try to find some, in addition to support, like community or family or friends, leaning on something that can be a sense of safety, whether that's prayer or what have you. And eliminating certain foods incorporating more of the foods that are helpful to eliminate viruses and things, bacteria. And, um, anything else? I think another thing, the last thing I'll say is that if you are someone that's more into, like, spirituality, um, law of attraction things, when you go through an illness, it can be confusing. And I think people in that community can mean well, but there also can be like this judgment or feeling like you did something wrong to deserve such a thing that happens to you. Um, and I don't think that's the case because I've had this wonderment of maybe certain things, like maybe we do attract certain things that happen to us, but then maybe there are certain things that we're meant to experience in this life and learn from. And it's not that we're being punished, but it's just something happening for some reason. And I think it's really helpful to see what you can learn from something. So it feels like there's more to an experience than just being like punished or suffering or what have you. Like when you can, like when you're going through it, I maybe not ponder these things because like you have enough to deal with. But after the fact, if you have the stamina to 
just think about like the positives that can come from this like what you've learned whether it's oh I feel closer to God now or something or um oh I feel closer to my family that because they were there for me or I learned all this new information that I can now share with other people to help them or um just learning different viewpoints or learning to let go of things that really have bothered you in the past that really aren't that big of a deal because when you go through something really intense it definitely shifts your perspective and things like unimportant things that felt really big don't necessarily feel as big anymore um I could go into that more but we all sit for another time just like for instance like if we're having like an argument with some someone sometimes like things can seem bigger than they are and then when you go through something or it's like illness or what have you it just makes you rethink things and just see things differently like it's not really that big of a deal at the end of the day and and also too it's a huge reminder to just be thankful for when you're healthy and to be thankful to focus on other things that are okay or I don't say going well, but like, I think when you're experiencing an illness or some type of suffering, it's easy to become entranced in that, which I think is why it's good to take things moment by moment, day by day, and not look at the, the big picture, like holding on to hope, but not, not just thinking like, oh, when is this going to be over? Like, blah, blah, blah just taking it moment by moment and trying to think of things that you know that you can be grateful for so like for me during that time it's like I'm thankful to like be able to breathe I'm thankful for like a cozy bed I'm thankful for my family that's there for me I'm thankful for like holy water that I'm using I'm thankful for you know, the medicine I'm taking is helping me or, um, like the food I can eat that is helping me and just anything you can kind of grasp onto. And yeah, to know that it's not, it doesn't need to be seen as a punishment. And one thing I'll leave off on is I was really thinking about how at least in Catholicism, I can't speak to other religions because I don't know, but it seems like so many saints in Catholicism actually had immense suffering and like physical suffering, like just these terrible things and were in a lot of pain and everything. And I was thinking at the time when I was going through all this and just trying to contemplate, like, am I being punished? Like what's happening here? Um, you know, like, why is this happening to me kind of thing? Like, is this trying to tell me something? Like, I'm just trying to figure out what was going on. And, but yeah, it just made me wonder, like, what about all these people that have been deemed as saints, but like, they lived their lives, a lot of their lives in so much suffering and pain with their own diseases or what have you to deal with. And I was like, okay, well, like, if they're literal saints, and if they actually, like, existed and all these things, whatever, um, then if they can be saints, it's not like they were being punished. I, it's just interesting when you really think about things. So I hope something that I've shared has been helpful. I will link, again, the things recommended in the description. I am sorry if this video is kind of like all over the place. I didn't really have, I just figured I was going to speak from my heart and not really have like an outline to follow or anything. But I wish you well. I wish you the best. Just keep holding on and just pray that things will get better, that you feel better. No, there is hope because I went through it too. And at least for me, I know how difficult it was. So if nothing else, if you don't want to try anything that I said or offered, just know that I'm wishing you the best.
and that you will get your meaning.